So today I'm joined by uh, Do Not Watch or formerly Antinatalist Outreach. Some of you may know him by. Um, but I've been looking forward to this one because um, we tried to find a few times and like uh, we've had to push it back a couple of times or whatever. But we're finally here um, talking. And um, yeah, the, f- the first thing I wanted to actually ask was about uh, the the name. Like, cause, so when I first came into... Well, let me let me give let me give a bit of background actually to how I like heard about you. So when I first came into the um, into the antinatalist community, uh, I, you know, there was like there was so much drama that had already happened, and there was all these different people that you know people were telling me like, oh, this person is this, and they've done that, and blah blah. blah. But there was one person who I heard about who I, I I didn't really know anything about them really. So like when I first joined the antinatalist community, I was told about people and then I was told all the things that they'd done and stuff like that in terms of like people's opinions of them and stuff. You know, I don't like this person. I do like that person. And then there was one person I kept on hearing the name of, but I didn't really know much about. And that was antinatalist outreach. What a bastard he is. (laughs) Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) And I remember seeing a lot of your posts, I think on Instagram at the time where you had that your profile picture was like some the back of someone in a, in a fjord or something holding their hands up with a yellow yeah, hat on. I mean, it was a kind of a mock of kind of some of the kind of religious kind of uh, pictures you see online of people yeah. like their hands out to like, you know, some deity in, in, in yeah. reverence or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 when I look back on it, I remember sort of understanding you as being like someone who's a bit of the st- a staple of the community if you get what i mean or something like that well um, that's not how i want to be or that's not how yeah but go ahead sorry i'm not comfortable with that i wasn't ever comfortable with that but yeah okay ahead. well so but but when i first heard about you you were called antinatalist outreach but now you're called do not watch so like w- what why did you change the name and also like um if you want to go into why you you don't want to be like a staple of the community or perceived like that go into that as well but yeah um okay uh well um i'm trying to remember when i changed it i i I don't know if it's nearly like two three years ago when i changed the name um it's over two years ago anyway Mm. um and it was kind of uh, a series of dark nights of the soul basically um i was basically contemplating my effects on the world you know what what i was doing and uh i uh i suppose i still battle with this and that is um feelings of futility in mm. in terms of everything really um and uh like what was i hurting people with the message you know um and and, and that's something i've always been very <sighs> i found very difficult how do you tell if, if, for example, I, I consider myself a realist, um, some people would say I'm a depressive realist, um, but you know, I, I think reality is depressing. So, how do I communicate that without depressing others? And I, I personally feel it's important to communicate it, okay, because I feel like I've got something to say, as does it, as, as the as do a lot of people, you know, as does, does a lot of people. Um, but if the message is depressing, um, it's very difficult to convey it, even though you feel like it might help people. You know, it might mm. set people free, for example, um, and enlighten them as to what's important in life. You know, um, again, it's something I'm I, I haven't ever been able to resolve personally. I, I but um, yeah, that's. I don't know if I've answered that. Have, is, does that make any sense? Well, I, I'm assuming, you know, you were like, so you were called AO and you were comp- contemplating, like, is me putting the message out there actually having a positive effect? And then to sort of symbolize the fact that you want to put the message out there, that may, but, you know, maybe you're a bit reserved in doing that. You called the channel Do Not Watch because actually maybe it, it's better to not watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen um why do we do anything but i mean it it was kind of that it wasn't like a weird marketing ploy to to like oh i'll call it do not watch (laughs) you know so that people will be intrigued and watch it no no it wasn't that it was because um yeah at the time i 
I just felt like it was too bleak. Like, by the way, I don't mm. just just talk about antinatalism on my on mm-hmm. my channel. I talk about lots of things like death, um, you know, just social harms, and uh, just you know, basically brutal things that people go through. You know, um, and it's kind of taboo, isn't it? I mean, you don't hear these things down the coffee shop or the, mm. or the pub uh, much, anyway. Um, so yeah it's um yeah that that's really it i mean i felt you know at the time in a in a in a kind of i had a little bit of a crisis in terms of my conscience like should i be talking about this shit mm. um and then i made some description for the channel like you know turn back now or whatever don't watch this channel if you do watch it you might be um enlightened i mean that's a bit pretentious to say that i suppose but um um yeah that's it man i mean i just at the time i just felt like um it it, it was too difficult a message to spread without mm. harming anybody you know yeah and um h- how did you like oh by the you... way that can i just say prior to that as well i'd been banned from twitter and instagram or not banned but i yeah. got taken out so there was that as well like i lost a lot of I don't know, I had like hundreds and hundreds of uh, posts, um, little, like some of them were crap, you know, I'll be honest, but some of them were like little poems and stuff that I was quite mm. proud of, you know, <laughs> uh, and they all just And you didn't have them saved? No, no. Oh, I'm not, mate. I'm not, I'm, I'm not as organized as you, Lawrence. Um, no, no, look, look, like, <laughs> there, joking, there's, no. Stuff I, there's stuff I don't yeah. have st- saved and like if it gets, to, I need to go back yeah. through a lot of my stuff and save it because if it gets taken down, yeah. you know, a lot of it's fucked. Yeah, I mean, in a way, I'm okay with that, though. I mean, life is transient, and mm. if no one else saved it, well, it wasn't worth saving. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. and it's it's uh, you could take a very Buddhist uh, approach to it as well. You know, embrace impermanence and uh, yeah, kind of what I, how I feel about it. So, yeah. what if it's gone? You know? Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, how how did you? So, we were just talking about you know like. Um, the message that you you talk about on your channel um yeah. but like specifically with antinatalism like how did you first come across it like how did you f- f- yeah first become an antinatalist i mean i i never heard of the term until um um samuels you know the, the indian guy um oh, Raphael, yeah, yeah 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 Raphael, yeah i never heard of it until i saw him in the uh yeah he, he was obviously all over the media at the time mm. and i thought my god this guy is actually um basically speaking my mind <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. um so that that was how i actually came into it and i was you know i, I wasn't into youtube i i, I was well I, I i wasn't a um let's just say i wasn't a very i didn't watch youtube much you know back in back in those days i mean i watched kind of popular videos and stuff i wasn't consumed by it you know what i mean mm. uh, so i didn't really know much about youtube channels I, I kind of like just looked at what came up on my feed you know yeah um i didn't really subscribe to channels and such i didn't follow anyone um i use i watched it if someone like sent me a video or something you know um so i thought you know what i'm gonna do something avant-garde i'm gonna fucking set up a youtube channel and a twitter <laughs> account about this yeah um and i called it anti list outreach and then literally, I don't know, I don't know how long it took, but I, I think I started getting followers. And uh, a little while later, I realized, actually, there's been people doing this for fucking 15 or so years <laughs> before me. <laughs> so I'm not like, uh, as I say, avant-garde. I'm probably one of those late adopters or, you know, the people at the very back. Um, so there, there were already um, communities, you know, um, and I was surprised because, mm. you know, they weren't very big obviously um but that that was that was my entrance as it were into the online world of um, mm. an yeah and and like what sort of what so, so you you've been in so when when was that the Raphael Samuel did that was that 2019 yeah yeah so it's that was like I, I joined in like I think I joined YouTube or like uh, I joined YouTube many years before but I uh, created the channel, I think, in yeah 
February ish, uh, 2019, I think. Yeah. And have you been involved in any sort of like, um, projects to do with antinatalism at all or have you mostly just kept to doing your own thing like you know the, the posts and you do live streams and stuff like that yeah um i mean back in the day i mean i joined some of the group chats and stuff um uh, as i say I, I i i it was just kind of getting to know people put my feelers out seeing what was mm. out there um i did try i think some artist group at one point oh um, yeah 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 that was that was i mean some people did really good work on that you know there was a i know there was a, a lady in russia who created cartoons and it really she really blossomed actually and she um oh. i forget her name i think it was oh I, I don't want to say her name because i might actually say um her personal name but yeah um, do you know where we can find that do you know where those are available like the cartoons um she's on she's on discord I can send it to you. I can give you her details. Okay, um, cool. She, yeah, they, yeah. they are they are really good. So, I mean, there were there were a few um, cartoonists um, who who made an artist who made uh, some great work. Yeah, well, yeah. weren't many. Um, uh, as, as I say, there weren't many people who 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 stepped up and joined in. Mm-hmm. But um, there were a few. It went on for a little while. I think it was. I can't even remember. Was it a monthly thing or a week? I think it was monthly. Mm. It was just a hashtag list art or something like that and um yeah we, we just shared pictures and stuff um yeah i mean that was interesting to me um i, I do like art and i like um people expressing themselves um what sort different. of art are you into like what what sort of what what's your like chosen outlet when it comes to art uh, yeah personal i mean I, when i say i like art i like other people's art because I, <laughs> I don't really consider myself an artist yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. um yeah um what's my chosen art um well i'm a bit of a jack of all trades master of none you know um yeah yeah i just i like creativity writing writing mainly poetry maybe i mean i i need a little bit of development in my drawing skills but uh, i do like drawing um i mean i like music as well i'm not a musician but i like listening to music as well so yeah that's that's it really yeah and um how did you become uh vegan as well like when did you come across that idea well i was vegetarian first um and uh that was obviously because i just felt grotesque I, I, i felt disgusted um when i just like looked at the flesh <laughs> of another mm. being you know um and uh it was a slow movement into vegetarianism even though i uh wasn't particularly happy in biology class you know uh, mm. dissecting stuff and looking at stuff in school um i uh, was in what was i about 23 or so when i became vegetarian um and then uh, it took me another, I think, yeah, it took me about five more years then to become uh, vegan. Um, <laughs> you know, um, that was, I knew it was, there was an element of hypocrisy, you know, in terms of, um, I know I know the way farming works, you know, and I know that... Um, in dairy if you if you're consuming dairy for example and you think you're you're doing enough in terms of not exploiting animals mm. well you know what do th- what do people think happens to the calves and what do the people think happens in artificial insemination you know um and what do people th- think happens to um the dairy herd after they've done the you know after they they're no good for milking anymore i mean they they get sent off to the abattoir Mm. so um i knew all these things you know so i just realized um i uh i had to try and do something more you know um now in terms of uh veganism i i like to think uh i'm a bit more of a realist in terms of like i i I, as i say i'm overwhelmed by just different perspectives different beliefs in the world and i really 
don't think we're ever going to change everybody's minds on it, you know. So that's why I really believe we should push lab grown meat. Mm, um, yeah. That's something I hope to like maybe go into more and try and, you know, uh, do some work on pushing that more in the world because I think that's basically one of the only ways, well, if not the only way that mm. we're going to stop, um, you know, farming of animals. Um, and, uh, you know, and, I, and I, I just think that that potentially offers benefits to humans as well because um, I know it's synthetic. They'll, they'll argue that it's it's not natural, but there may be ways to make it even better, right? I know that it, it will be better than any meat could be in terms of nutrition, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like... Um so what if it's not natural like none of the yeah, stuff yeah. in our modern lives is natural we live in I houses know. yeah all this sort of stuff I um mean, the 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 uh the herds especially in america are just pumped full of uh, all different drugs like antibiotics yeah. and stuff and yeah it's um and, and we've also had uh numerous problems with like you know mad cow disease and, exactly yeah. um there was also i don't know what it was called but there was some growth hormone that was being put into um cattle for a long time there um, and apparently that had detrimental effects obviously on the cows but also on mm. humans that edit as well yeah 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 and and look with with something like lab grown meat i don't even just see it as because some people you know they associate it with with like it's like a vegan technology mm. but i don't even just see it as a vegan technology i i, I see it as an antinatalist technology I, as well because if you look at all of the sentient beings coming into existence probably at the moment with it within our tangible reach the one technology that would massively reduce the amount of beings coming into existence would be lab grown meat mm. it, 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 it would if, if it gets to price parity or cheaper than um you know meat that comes from animals mm. it, it, it would just at some point it would decimate traditional well, i don't see why i don't see why it wouldn't you know eventually yeah. get to that point um i mean it should be f there would be much less wastage you know mm. it would all, all energy would be going into growing the meat the lab grown meat yeah rather and, than the bones the brain rather than the health of the animal yeah you know rather than keeping them warm and you know keeping them safe and you know looking after them in pregnancy and stuff so it just makes more sense from that perspective yeah. as well yeah, no, no, a hundred percent. I think if any antinatalists are looking for things to spend their time on, I think getting lab-grown meat to market and getting it competitive in in terms of the you know um, on price, that is one of the best things antinatalists and, can focus on. I think, and obviously in terms of uh, the environment as well, and and uh, you know ecosystems and stuff, we all know about um, methane and uh, its effects on. Um, you know suppose its effects on the climate and also mm. you know slurry and effluent from farms causing problems in in water systems and stuff mm. so it's it's a win win you know yeah yeah, yeah. no 100% um also another thing i wanted to ask you about is um i hope you don't uh mind me uh speaking about this but um we we spoke about um off recording we spoke about um, there was a demonstration that happened recently in London. Um, there was a few of us that did, went to Speaker's Corner and we did like a Stop Having Kids style demonstration. And um, I uh, I mentioned it to you and you um, said that you had like um, personal and philosophical reasons uh, why you didn't really want to engage in that sort of um advocacy like we m m push to the side the personal reasons like we you know i don't want to go into those because they're your personal well they're reasons. more or less aligned anyway so, oh okay yeah. what well, yeah. are you happy talking about them like the, yeah i mean the um, i suppose sometimes i feel like well who am i to tell anyone what to do you know <laughs> mm. but um yeah i mean i i get why people do it but and it can Danny Shine, for example. I think it, for me, I think it's entertaining sometimes. I'll be honest. Mm, um, mm. Uh, it's also interesting. I mean, you learn stuff 
in terms of the listening to the debates and stuff, how people think and and, and such. Um, but I don't think it's for everybody. I think that you know online discourse is just so easy, and mm -hmm. um, you can reach far greater numbers of people. Um, yeah. But as I say, if people want to do that, um, it's up to them. Uh, it's it's it is a big bad world, and I would urge caution <laughs> because um, no matter what you say in public, you're going to attract someone who disagrees with you, and, and unfortunately, sometimes it's um, almost psychotic, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, you're you're putting yourself out there as a target in public, and uh, yeah, it's not for the faint-hearted. I would I would mm. say, yeah. No, to to be honest, even though I was one of the people at that event, I agree with everything you've just said. Like th the main reason I would engage in activism like that is not because I think that form of activism is effective. It's because you can get it on camera and then put it online. And that's yeah. the thing that will reach way, way more people. Um, you know, I, yeah. So like, but but like you said, it doesn't suit everyone. Someone like Danny is very well suited to camera. You know, he's mm. confident, he's well oiled, yeah. he's done all this sort of stuff. He can have banter with someone whilst making a serious yeah, point. It's, all it's this not sort of for stuff. everybody. Not everybody wants to be like in that yeah. position. Not everybody wants is like, and um, I think it attracts different personalities. I haven't seen it in yeah. in, in your group yet, <laughs> but obviously no, no. some some people who are obsessed with you know being at the front and on camera and stuff some of them are mm. you know well you know luckily I, I i don't know i haven't seen it in in your circle like uh, in in that group that you know went to that demonstration but mm. you know there are people out there who i mean I, i've spoke about this on my channel before and it's like psych, human psychology and and the kinds of people that get to the top of uh you know organizations and movements and stuff um it's uh it's a worry it's like I, I i've said this before i don't i believe we live in a psychoarchy okay mm. and maybe sometimes i talk about it too much on my channel but it is interesting how uh kind of ruthless low empathy psychology sometimes utilize movements mm. and for, for, for narcissistic supply as it were um I, as i say i i haven't seen that in your you know london activity i haven't you know i'm just saying in in a wider circle and that's one of the i suppose you know that's one of the reasons um i'm happy with my friends in real life i'm happy with people i know mm. I, I don't necessarily feel the need to make people friends with people just because i'm the same ideology as them you know um mm. although maybe it would add value to my life you know um yeah um ha, ha, do you think it's mind me asking like do you do you feel much happier now that you've met people in real life um who share your views yeah well the, the f first thing i'll say is um i finished editing all the footage from it so mm -hmm. there will be a video up soon um about i think it might be coming out um on sunday uh yeah which for people watching this it'll already be out but for you it'll be coming out on sunday i think um so uh yeah <laughs> you'll be able to um give me your review of what you think it was uh what you think it was like but um well, i really yeah. liked uh, you and um john together you know you seem to be um you come across very natural as friends and um mm. also um dare i say it normal <laughs> um say and, what uh, I said, dare I say it, normal, normal. Oh, normal, um, normal. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, what, what, what is normal? But um, yeah, you, you yeah, paint a good yeah, picture yeah. of it, Lawrence. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, there's so, that quote, isn't there? Like, um, it's uh, being well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society is not a good measure of health or something like that. Was that John Lennon, I think, said that or something? Yeah. I, well, I think it's probably been said by, like, multiple people, probably, that, yeah. sort, of, that mm -hmm. sort of vibe. Yeah. Um, but... On the point you were asking me about whether I feel my life's improved by interacting with people in person with this opinion, um, I think yes, but I think that is because I've had positive interactions. Yeah, I haven't had, I've had negative interactions with other antinatalists online, but hey, it's the internet. Like you're going to have negative interactions with people any group of people online even if it's a group you agree with mm. um in person i haven't had any 
negative interactions with mm-hmm. antinatalists. All the antinatalists that I've met in person have either been personal friends um, or yeah. have become personal friends or they're cool people, but I just, mm-hmm. you know, haven't formed a friendship with them or anything like that, but mm-hmm. they're perfectly decent and cool people. Mm-hmm. Um, the other uh, the other thing that just popped into my head uh, is I kind of am I'm obsessed with like, you know, like determinism and they're mm. probably not being free will. I was actually going to ask you about that later if you want to hold that note. Oh, right, or do you okay. want to talk about it no, now? No, no, it's fine. You can go, yeah, that, that, that is something that affects my um, kind well, of... Well, actually, let, let's just talk about it now because it doesn't really matter the order of things. So mm. let, let me actually like properly ask okay. it because there will be some people watching that they don't know what you mean by determinism. Mm. So, Well, I don't even know if I know, but uh, <laughs> you might want to look it up on Wikipedia, guys, and then come back to the video. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So, well, so basically <laughs> it, it's all about the idea of free will, right? Um, yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you see as free will meaning and why do you not think there is free will <sighs> that's a good question i mean it's hard to explain what free will is uh because i don't see it ever existing in any way <laughs> even mm. so so let me just explain what why i don't think there is free will so f- what well, let's just try and say what what free will is generally accepted yeah. as yeah so the whole world is generally set up to uh view people as having uh control over their actions okay and and um you know we we are judged for literally mm. who we are what 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 we do and say uh in every in i i'd say in every way you know in 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 the workforce in school <laughs> you're judged for your uh you know your ability to you know do school work you're judged for your ability to as I say, work, and that helps you get ruminate, r- remuneration and get on in life. Mm. Uh, you're judged in your ability to socialize, obviously, what you say in public, and you know people make a, an assessment of you, and you know, yeah. they might view you as a good or a bad person, a likable or unlikable person. Uh, you're also judged in the, um, you know, the judicial system, like uh, you know the the, the criminal um, the punishment. Um, around the world is based on mostly based on blaming people okay for, mm. for who they are and what they've done um and also you know a lot of the stigma around mental health in the world is based on blame you know blaming individuals so there's a lot of blaming individuals and there's a lot of judgment against individuals mm. <clears throat> and when i think about it it doesn't make any sense you know because um I don't think anybody is really in charge of who they are. You know, like I don't think anybody, none of us, for example, chose to be born. Okay. Mm. Um, And if you go on from that, nobody chose the effects of being born either. Like we, nobody chooses their, you know, genetic um, makeup. Nobody chooses um, their environment that, that conditions that and creates their psycho psychological outlook. Uh, nobody chooses the fluctuations in, in hormones in their bodies that mm. makes them feel a certain way in any moment. Um, nobody chooses the anatomy of their brain, you know, which bit works and which bit doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody chooses their abilities in terms of uh, the retaining of knowledge and the ability to convey it, you know. Um, and all these things are so important in life, you know. Um, for an individual's well-being for the benefit of society but equally um they're important factors when looking at uh the detrimental effects of individuals on society and others uh, and themselves as individuals you know um and as i say i i just don't think anybody chooses who they are okay Mm. We're, we're merely um acting due to unconscious drives okay uh that are controlling us i mean if you want to go right down it's like the dna molecule is gaming us okay (laughs) the dna molecule um is gaming us and we're these kind of beings who've evolved basically uh to serve a a dna molecule you know Mm. this dna molecule is rolling through time 
and uh, we're just um, the the conduit for the for for that. You know, um, it's in charge. You know, uh, and it is in charge of 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 trying to continue. Okay, so trying to push through time as a, as a, as a, as a, as a as a phenomena, but it is also facing the physical reality of the universe okay so it's a battle between this subconscious drive and a physical reality and here we are <laughs> the poor fuckers caught in between that mm. um being pushed by as i said our subconscious drives uh against uh, a physical reality that is often brutal um mm. and you know no again nobody chooses it seems like we're manipulating it seems like we're in charge but you know when we do things we're only doing it because we can and nobody chooses what they can do <laughs> it's literally mm. just an innate thing in us uh, yeah the, or, um, or not yeah no the, the 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 way i understand and i i agree with you i also think free will is an illusion i just think it's one of the best fucking illusions out there oh it really um, is yeah 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 or, or, or not depending on uh <laughs> the individual it can be a tragic yeah uh, this is the thing i mean when i say best i mean convincing yes 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 i know i'm sorry um yeah, 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 the yeah. um the thing about it is it, it adds a very tragic element to uh to life because it's also i believe it's a good reason to be an antinatalist because when you realize nobody is in charge and nobody has free will right i think it becomes even more important not to bring anybody into the world okay mm. uh, but ironically having said that because there's no free will <laughs> um you can't <laughs> convince people of that point <laughs> well so th this uh, is this is the thing because like so the way i understand free will is there's kind of like two parts of it one is is more like a, a um a, a, an environmental part and one is a philosophical part the environmental part is that like none of us exist in a vacuum where we can have all the options in front of us mm -hmm. and unbiasedly assess each one. All of us are, you know, we've had influences from our parents, the environment we grew up in, how right. much sleep we've had. Are we hungry? All of this sort of stuff, you know, are we annoyed by something that all of these things are going to mm -hmm. feed into us being heavily biased and not actually having free will in, in what we will to happen. If you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the other side of it is on a more philosophical sense is that the only, well, I mean, this may change as our understanding of physics changes, but as we understand it now, um, and also our understanding of consciousness changes, but as we understand it now, consciousness seems to be f coming from the brain and the brain is active through um, electrical impulses going around it, right? It's this organ that has electrical impulses going around it. Each, electric each electrical impulse is going to be kickstarted by something else, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if you follow that back, one thing will have to be caused by another will have to be yeah, caused by another. Yeah, it's a chain another. of causation. That's it's why a it's, chain, exactly, yeah. it's a chain of causation and each thing you can't control. Okay, this no. bit of electricity is going to go this way and and therefore I can decide how it's going to impact the next bit. Like you can't make those decisions. No, and I've actually got sorry. I've actually got on my bookshelf there Free Will by Sam Harris and in you that I've read it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. only a small little book. So got yeah, no, it's only a small pages, book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and in that he talks about how um, they did experiments uh, scanning people's brains while they made decisions mm. to try and, you know, get some yeah. empirical data on this idea of free will. And they found that the decision they were going to make has yeah. already had already been made in their brain yeah. by reading the electrical signals before yeah. they were consciously aware yeah. of what decision yeah. they had made. Yeah. It's a tragic element of, of life that it, it, it seems deterministic and mm. nobody's in charge and, and you're literally rolling that dice for somebody and when you when you when you when you light the fuse it, you know there's no stopping it you know you don't know mm. what's going to happen for that person but they have no way of getting out of that fate you know that's going to happen for them you know mm. um and it could be absolutely horrific um but as i said the, the tragic element to it is how do you convince someone of that in a world where there's no free will and <laughs> that's yeah. the i mean 
bro I, I, i'm 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 going so far down the rabbit hole on this like i i i i i'm as i say i'm fatalistic i i i i'm i delve into futility a lot and um mm. i think a lot of it in life is everyone is just trying the best with the hands they've been dealt um a lot of people are i view them as wrong in what they're doing but they'll equally view me as wrong mm. um it's as i say i made a video on my channel called this world is hell and um <laughs> i mean it kind of is in, in in many ways in in that regard because it's just so out of our hands you know it's just mm. overwhelmingly as i say it's 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 an overwhelming um in my view <laughs> it's an overwhelming you know situation it's mm. uh what what do, what do you think is is the um like the strongest argument for antinatalism like if 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 you yeah. had you know if you were put in a call with someone and you had to communicate antinatalism yeah, to mean, them listen i've I, I, personally i like the i like the fact you can't get consent i think that's quite strong mm. um um but you know I don't know, man. I'm, it's, it might be that I'm not very good at it, but I, I trying to convince people is is a very difficult thing, um, and I, and and I think that uh, it comes down to. I think you said before that you're someone who's had a, a decent life and privileged and stuff. Not, well, privileged in the sense of from a global outlook. You know, you you know, you're mm. not eating. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. You're not struggling for food or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I think for me personally, I view life as uh, an experiential journey. Okay. Um, and it's the experience that shapes outlook. Okay. Um, obviously part of that is what you're programmed with. Okay. So for example, you seem to have been programmed with these, um, compassionate, um, settings. Okay. So for example, when you, I watched your video, while back about when you became vegan and you know you mm. were cooking in your kitchen and you were cooking um i don't know what it was chicken or something and you you saw the dog and you realized you had compassion for this for the dog and then you're like wow there's a there's something going on here because what i'm eating is an animal why why do i have this you know bias towards you know my canine canine friend but not for you know the, the chicken um you 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 obviously are programmed with a logical mind a comp and, and uh, a mixture of logic and compassion uh but we do live in a world where not everybody is um you know not not everybody is in that situation not everybody has that and uh it, that's again part of the problem of uh, being human and, and living in a in a world where there's just so many different types of people with different abilities and different uh, outlooks and again it's not their fault that's mm. the thing I want to say. It's it's nobody's fault, you know, and that's that's the tragedy. But it's also um, I view it personally. I view it as liberating as well. It's been quite liberating for me to realize uh, that nobody's really in charge. Um, and if anybody ever does something, has done something really bad to you in your life, uh, it's not I think personal. Okay, they didn't pick on you because it was you. Uh, they did it because it was them and they didn't choose to be them so right, right. there is it, it's kind of uh it could it could potentially bring peace to some people to realize yeah there's no free will right. yeah i get what you mean it's like um you know if if you realize the lack of agency in people mm. you can still be harmed by what happens to you but you don't have the same hatred towards that person no, no. it's like you know if it's 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 like when when you know when we see a child do something bad mm. we don't have the same hatred towards that child because we realize oh well there's you know there's loads of outside influences on that child we see them as innocent mm -hmm. but maybe we should have the same view of of everyone you know yes I um so. yeah i mean i mean i i believe in rehabilitation um mm. For, for, for people um and i think a lot of problems in society are mental health problems actually i think it's a, yeah. a lot of yeah, yeah. for example a lot of the crimes and stuff I, I would say if you if if you made everything into a mental health problem <laughs> there might be less crime because people don't want to admit they're mental you know 
Um, mm. So if you said, oh, you're doing this because you're mentally ill, uh, it might stop a lot of people from, from acting antisocially. Having said that, there are some things I don't know if, if they can be rehabilitated. There are some, well, crimes that I view as so terrible. And there are some people that are obviously severely dangerous. Um, mm. So it, I, personally, this is me speaking, I find it very hard, even though I've just given that little <laughs> bit of... Um, you know, uh, a message about forgiveness. Mm. I I do personally find it hard to forgive like certain crimes, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we all know what those crimes are. I don't have to talk about them, but like the, the, the standard ones that get the most um, yeah. crimes against children so, as such. Um, so in terms of a world with no free will and those individuals exist, it's, um, I, I think um, taking people out of society is a good thing, you know. Um, even though they didn't choose who they are, I think it's still good to lock mm. them away. You know, um, yeah, that's 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 um, that's just all we can do, really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. What's um, what's I might even butcher the pronoun pronunciation of this word, but what's um, gnosticism? Because oh, I've, yeah. I've seen on your channel, you know, yeah. you, you have like um, <laughs> yeah, some yeah. gatherings and you talk about this topic, but I don't actually know that much about it. Well, neither do I, but um, I'm only joking. <laughs> well, well, yeah, neither do I. I mean, does anybody? I mean, it's uh, Gnosticism is like, uh, it was an ancient Christian kind of uh, religious view of the world mm. um, that uh, the creator was actually the bad guy <laughs> okay so basically right. it, it turns it all on its head so uh i actually was raised a catholic and um mm. you know i said my hell marys and stuff and um when i was in bed at night as a you know as i was going into my teenage years and then i had to stop because um you know i was thinking about other things and it was it was um making me feel evil because you're not allowed to masturbate in catholicism so uh <laughs> I uh, I stopped praying in bed at night, but um, yeah, I um, <laughs> started doing something else. <laughs> too much information, sorry, but like um, yeah. So basically, uh, Gnosticism is the view that th the creator is the bad guy. Uh, right. They 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 believe that there is this true God, like way up above everything, and uh, but that God is uh, is not the is not the well that part of god so they believe almost like everything is god like there's a divine spark in everybody okay um but that part of god isn't the part that created this world that was like the lowest mm. vibration okay the lowest they call it thoughts okay so yeah it was it was like the most base level thought of that true god that created this world and they some people call it the demiurge okay so the demiurge is is the name given to the creator of this realm and um basically the Demiers created it as a kind of vanity project, okay, is, is the best way of explaining it. So it's like a this lower level entity or or thought, dullard or whatever you want to call it, was was jealous of the kind of highest power and wanted but wanted to be like them, okay? So they created this kind of attempt of a copy of the spiritual realm, okay? And they are, and in doing so, they created material reality, which is where we find ourselves. And because they're vain and because they're possibly stupid, I, I don't know, there's loads of different descriptions of them. Um, they either didn't know what they were doing and fucked it all up, or they were kind of psychopathic and, as I said, narcissistic and vain. And they basically want to trap us here because it's, mm. it's like a, a jealous um fight against the true loving god so what they do is they um try to seduce us to remain here okay and try to block our spiritual enlightenment um so that we kind of worship this world instead of the true god as it were and the whole point of gnosticism is to help you seek knowledge so it's all about attaining knowledge they, they view attaining knowledge as a good thing because attaining knowledge frees you from uh, attachment to this world basically right so does yeah. that is that where agnostic and gnostic comes from well it's 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 a good question because i i heard of agnosticism before 
uh, Gnosticism. So agnostic is is the meaning without knowledge. You don't have the knowledge. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what it means. Gnostic is like yeah, it means basically having knowledge. So seeking of knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah so it, listen, I don't necessarily believe it. Um, I am someone who likes delving into woo woo and uh, <laughs> metaphysical things and listening to all. Start different... drinking your own urine next. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't gone that far. Um, <laughs> But, uh, I mean, I am humble enough to say I don't know what the fuck's going on, and I yeah, don't really yeah, think yeah, anybody yeah. does. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Uh, I'm not an atheist. I am. I would consider myself agnostic. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, the thing I like about Gnosticism is the view that attainment of knowledge is a good thing, okay? And I think that is a good philosophy yeah. to live by that you know the more knowledge we get the more we can free ourselves from mm. potentially from suffering but i suppose the other argument is if some people say ignorance is bliss but i don't necessarily believe that because i think that um you know yeah there's suffering and ignorance as well so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i'm rambling no, no, I... but um i don't know if i'm making any sense i'm sorry but, yeah. no well one thing i was gonna ask is um does gnosticism relate to antinatalism or in any oh, way right. that's a good question. do you see them as yeah. separate well there's different views on that some people say it does some people say it doesn't um as far as i uh believe anyway um it does um there were these people called the cathars in uh, um medieval uh, europe and they were in northern spain southern france and northern italy and they were a group of kind of gnostic people they, they were the, like the last gnostic kind of people in europe if, if right. not the world and um they basically believed uh, that procreation was bad because it was condemning beings to this fallen world uh, mm. it was condemning uh, an individual to it was it trapping a soul here basically uh, mm. so they had these people called the perfect people they were like the the preachers uh, and interestingly they were um men and women so they didn't believe in like patriarchy they believed in like equality so they had mm. men and women who basically um decided not to procreate and uh, these people were held in very high esteem in society but interestingly they didn't judge harshly anybody who did procreate because they believe that we are we are just uh, at the mercy of um, our passions and it's very very hard to uh, break out of that interesting enough uh, they were also uh, i believe mostly plant-based as well uh, that's, right, they believed in plant-based um, they, they believed in like not harming life as much as possible uh, very yeah. interesting yeah very just there's not that much information on them but you can look them up the cathars c a t h a r s um yeah, yeah so yeah, it might yeah. be worth looking up and yeah they they they're the kind of european uh, ones but as i say gnosticism i think it well it, it started in in uh, modern day uh, israel yeah. and around there and there are some views i mean it's quite similar in many ways to some buddhist um philosophy theology in terms mm. of viewing the world as suffering and trying to get the hell out of here <laughs> through yeah, enlightenment, it, you know, it's it's yeah. so interesting. So I've recently th the video might be out by the time this comes out. It might mm. not be. I'm not sure. But I've recently been doing a lot of research into. Um, uh, I'm going to butcher his name because I don't speak Arabic. But Abu Al Al Almari. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you know the guy? Yeah, I mean, he's. Um, I don't. I don't know much about him, well, but he's that guy who was a poet and a kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, so yeah, I've been doing like a lot of research into him. I've learned a lot more about him than I knew mm. before. Um, it's really interesting guy, and it's interesting yeah. how he's still an important figure in some parts of the world mm. today. Um, and it, it mostly he he tends to be important because of his poetry and his mm. um, anti-religious views. Yeah, um, he wasn't necessarily against the idea that was a god per se, but he was definitely against organized religion. Right. Um, yeah, I think and, that's where I'm i'm at as well i mean i think it's very egotistical to tell others what to think spiritually when literally no one knows what the hell is going on mm. um but having said that i suppose i would tell somebody their ideas are a load of rubbish if um it involved serious harm of others you know or harm of others mm. you know? yeah 
Yeah, yeah, but it, but it, it, it's so interesting about Al Mari because I'm doing research about him, and mm. I, I think he might be the first example of a confirmed vegan antinatalist. Wow. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, I just looked up the Cathars, and it, it it looks mm. like they they were around after Al Mari was. I mm. think he was around about a hundred to two hundred years before them. I was going to ask something actually mm. about. Um, so I think it was yesterday uh, you did a live stream with Danny Shine reacting yeah. to some guy th who thought he had the answer to all our problems. Yeah. And in it, you were talking about how delusional society is and how everyone's operating under delusions. And one thing I wanted to ask you was... Well, that, that was actually Danny's view, I think, but I did more or less agree with it. So, okay, like, I don't agree. Okay. We're all, I don't agree. We're deluded completely all the time. But yeah, 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 we, yeah, we yeah. got we got a lot of delusion going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But my my question was, what do you think is the biggest delusion that is operating in the antinatalist community? <sighs> Listen, I'm a, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, because I believe in like determinism and such. I think AN is just a phenomena, like a phenomenon of of. of time and place where we're at as a as a species like and our and the knowledge we've accrued and such and you know, access to information and i i think it's all happening because of so many people are just waking up to what the hell's life is what, what's going on in the world you know we, we have like it's like the belly of the beast has been slain open okay and all the guts and entrails are out and we're seeing what the hell is inside and it's not pretty i mean we've got we've got access to the internet so if, if 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 an individual is suffering and they go online to see if they can get help, then they connect with others and they say, "Oh my God, this person is suffering in that in that country," and you know, and then you go on Twitter and you see wars here, wars there, wars everywhere. I mean, there's all these there's problems all over the world, and it's just like we're absolutely inundated with bad news more than ever, you know. And I, so from that perspective. I view antinatalism as just a, a natural um, reaction to that. Uh, again, from a from a deterministic perspective, it was bound to happen. There's no no other option. But it's just for some reason this was destined to happen because I believe it as a, a natural reaction to our modern day condition, as mm. you know, aware apes <laughs> who have access to lots and lots of information and can communicate with people all over the world and uh we're at this kind of culmination point where all the data is showing we're in a very bad place you know environmentally okay um we've got annals and annals of historical evidence of you know how we have mistreated each other uh how we have mistreated other species and also there's all the kind of just you know to go online i mean it's a brutal place i mean just mm. arguments everywhere and, and and a lot of it is just people safeguarding their ego you know a lot of it is like people aren't willing to engage and just try and have a conversation it's just like it's all protectionism everyone's protecting their point of view without trying to connect to others and it's that's that's just it's just part of whatever this is that we're experiencing you know rolling through time don't get me started. Some people say time is an illusion, Lawrence. I won't, I've been speaking <laughs> about that recently on my channel yeah, as well. That, that's the next one I would, not not for this conversation, but that was the next thing that I was going to look into. One of the next things. I've got a talk saved well, on my watch later list by this yeah, guy who I, I forget there is, his name. Yeah, there's something called the block universe. Okay, the block universe theory. That will blow your mind. That's basically the view that everything has happened, is happening, and will yeah. happen. And, and it's all happening at the same time. There's no, like, so basically... You haven't been born yet. You've just been born. You're living and you're dead and, and, and you don't exist. And it's all happening at the same time. Because like the universe has these parameters that are fixed and everything is within that. And the actual movement of time is an illusion. It's all just there on the, on the page, as mm. it were. Um, so block, block theory, block universe theory, if you want to look that up. But there are competing theories, such as yeah, growing yeah. block universe. But I mean, some of the top physicists believe that, that time is an illusion. To me, that's mind-blowing and yeah it's listen this is mm. whoa you know it's 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 out there it's it's mind-blowing as i said yeah i mean like it, it it's something that i haven't looked into so i wouldn't be able to communicate mm. well with someone about it but it wouldn't surprise me if it's true because 
I've become convinced that free will is an illusion. Mm. And if that's an illusion and it's a pretty convincing one, then mm. why would time not be a really convincing illusion yeah. either? Yeah. Um, I, st- I still, Lawrence, and I, 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 so you've, you've said you're an atheist, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I still think it's really bizarre we're here. And that's just something I think about a lot. Like, mm. it's just re- like, not just we're here, but anything exists. I just find it so bizarre. And obviously, yeah, I'm not saying there's a God because I don't know. Uh, mm. But it's just so bizarre, isn't it? I mean, we just have to, ex- ex- like, not many, not enough people say how bizarre it is that we're fucking yeah. here, you know? I mean, I think well, no, it's I really think, bizarre. I think we actually probably believe pretty much the same thing i think mm. you're using the term atheist in a different way because all right yeah yeah because I... you're, you're without theology yeah i i get you exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like so I, i'd be an agnostic atheist in a way yeah yeah i, I yeah, i'm yeah. the same i'm an agnostic yeah. atheist as well like i don't think there's not a god i just don't know i'm the yeah, same as yeah. you like i'm just as fucking confused as you are yeah. um like i don't know i don't know why we're here i don't know why the yeah. universe started did and it I've, even start i'm mm, not even sure and i've wrote a little bit on my community posts about how the fact like i don't know if humans can accept that we might never find out you know uh, because mm. you know we've only got five senses and yes so we can only see and feel and hear and you know whatever touch what we can uh, sense yeah there are some things that we can uh, measure that are there such as uv light that we can't necessarily see but we can measure the effects of them and say they exist mm. but we 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 don't know there could be there are other things that could be happening beyond our scope of um sensory uh, abilities so I, I i but i don't know if we'll ever be able to accept that and i mm. don't know i'm not saying we should because it, it does seem that all we can do as humans is pursue knowledge you know and, and like try and work out what the hell's going on but so far it doesn't seem very good at all <laughs> that, mm. that that's that's kind of where i'm at yeah and it's like there's two things it's like will we ever find out and then if we do will everyone accept it because humans yeah. don't have a good track record for accepting things that have been demonstrated to be true you know often we shun people yeah who yeah i mean you're, things you're absolutely true. right i mean some of the greatest minds alan turing i mean galileo you know all, all these people even i think copernicus i mean they were shunned they were abused by mainstream society and mm. uh, yeah we have a terrible track record in that regard yeah mm. no 100 percent. um so if you let let's say i'm like a new anti-natalist fresh on the mm. block right like i i, I kind of have been having I, I i've had sort of anti-natalist views for a while i heard mm. someone mention the term and, and found out what it was and i was like oh yeah that describes me and i'm kind of interested to learn more now like i'm new to the community mm. um where would you point if someone if they somehow got in contact with you where would you point them to expand their knowledge and understanding of of the topic of antinatalism like are there specific like websites books videos i just tell them to read david benatar you know um yeah you know um i think that's about it really um and you know when they've read it they can delve into any online stuff Mm -hmm. um but i think he provides a very good you know coherent framework for for what it is having said that i just want to say this as well this is important actually um Mm. from my perspective (laughs) sorry to go on about free will again but um basically i don't necessarily view it in moral terms anymore okay so Mm. the whole argument like lots of people say antinatalism is the view that it's morally bad to create life i've taken morality out of it and just view it as bad you know because if there's no free will, I can't judge people. You know, I can't say you're you're you know you're a morally bad person. Um, right, right. Uh, so I view it taking the blame out of it and just view it as you know bad. And why do I view it as bad? Well, it's because it could possibly be terrible, and you can't guarantee that it won't. You know, that that's it. So, Mm-mm. but you 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 place less emphasis or no emphasis on the moral condemnation part of it. Well, I'm only human, and we are programmed to do that. Um, we are programmed mm. to be outraged. Um, right, someone right. called me antinatalist outrage once back in the day. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> um, but um, I do. That is a beast I'm trying to slay in my own psyche. Um, very difficult. It's very difficult um, to, to, to get rid of that part of of, of, of myself. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's a very 
grown up thing to do. Yeah. I, I, I just got a question that came to mind. Um, sort of two questions, but related. Mm. Do you or have you ever practiced meditation? And do you ever go to Buddhist centers? Um, good question. I tried to practice meditation uh, in the past. And it's funny because I'm, I just thought it was a load of BS. Um, mm. um, I remember at one point I did sit, tried to sit on the ground cross-legged and like stuff <laughs> um, and tried to do it because I had friends who did it. Mm. I never saw the point, if I'm honest. I like mm. I, I, you know, all this mindfulness and stuff. I just saw it as cope, you know, just like, oh, you know, people have these coloring books and you know, joining the dots and stuff in their adulthood mm. to escape their mental anguish and stuff. Well, look, I'm not going to say don't do that because if it works for you, it works for you. But I always saw it as, listen, as uh, my heart has softened now. But when I first came across it, I I thought it was just pointless escapism and it was it was uh almost like if life is that bad that you have to do that yeah mm. it married into my antinatalist sentiments like if you literally mm. have to sit there at a table with a coloring pen coloring in a fucking picture of a, a dragon when you're fucking 26 years of age you know um with you know that you didn't even draw you know um <laughs> with like saliva drooling down your tongue <laughs> or whatever sitting there at the table i mean is life that good, you know, um, that you have to do these weird forms of escapism where you have to literally forget mm. and avoid reality, you know? Um, but as I say, that, I think that was a bit harsh. Yeah, that's kind of true, but it's also, isn't everything uh, a form of escapism really? In well, that, that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I actually agree with you. I do think it's a form, I do think it's a form of cope and a form of escapism. Mm. But I think that mm. most of the things that we do yeah, are yeah. cope and forms of escapism. Yeah, like, yeah. what is trying to have a good life if not just a form of escapism and cope from the suffering yeah, in life? Exactly, and the fact exactly. that we, you know, we aren't here for any ultimate purpose. Mm. Um, I well, happen that to we think know of. Let's 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 go that back we're to aware that. of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That we're aware of. Um, but I, I think I happen to think personally, it's one of the more healthy forms of cope and escapism yeah um i, I think, think there are very unhealthy forms of cope and escapism i think that's one of the more healthy ones but i do agree with you fundamentally it is cope and escapism yeah no no i say, I say my heart is softened because I, I i came to the same views as you that everything is pretty much escapism and there are things that are harmful forms of escapism like debauchery mm. you know drugs and you know rec reckless behavior and stuff uh mm -hmm. so yeah there's much worse things you could do and yeah, it's not harming anybody. And to be honest with you, the people I've met who do that kind of thing, like mindfulness and stuff, a lot of them have been very lovely people. So, yeah. Mm. Um, is it just your YouTube channel that you sort of publicly go by now? Or is there anywhere else people No, can... there's nowhere else. Thank that's you. it, really. So it's um, just the YouTube yeah. channel. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, I'll, I'll link it in the description so people can... Um can find it if you would like me to do that yeah all yeah, right okay, okay. but i'll put in brackets next to it do not watch you know do not go on this <laughs> well i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so I'll, I'll link it in the description so people can find you do like you know fairly regular live streams and stuff right which are yeah quite, i mean um, it's... interactive people anyone can join them right yeah yeah i tried to keep it as like as, as, as kind of like regulars and stuff um so if if the people well i have my way of trying to ensure that you know i don't get trolls you know because you get all yeah, manner yeah. of people online doing things to shut down channels and yeah stuff, yeah so. yeah some bell end yeah yeah okay cool well i'll link i'll link it in there um is there anything else you wanted to um touch on before we finish off no i just um wish everybody well and uh it is a it is a world of suffering and there is lots of um pain in it um and nobody knows where we're all going to end up but uh i do hope that everybody listening finds a way of coping and if they can if they if they are coping uh they'll uh try and help others as well you know and also i will say in helping others it does it's a cliche but i think it's true when you help others you do get benefit you know you do get mm. And people say, "Oh, that's selfish." But hey, if someone else is winning as well, it's it's a good thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. If, if if that's selfish, then everything's selfish, and then it's mm. like, well, there are better selfish things to do. Well, it's a win-win, isn't it? If you're helping someone yeah. and you're getting a little serotonin boost, well, at least someone else is benefiting, benefiting, uh, yeah. benefiting from it yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, no, a hundred percent. Um, thank you so much for for coming on. Um, mm. it's been cool to talk to you actually because I actually don't think we've had a direct conversation before, unless we might have. So when I first got involved in the community, mm. that that was when I heard about you in it. So I'd known about you ever since then, and but there were a few meetups that used to happen online on Zoom, and we right. might have been in one of those together. I can't remember, but I think this is the first like one on one direct conversation. That was like years ago. I remember I was yeah, in it was ages few, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, thank you, Lawrence.